Now from the News 4 Jack's I team, shoplifting solutions. Retail ripoffs are on the rise and we're all paying for them with higher prices and fewer options on store shelves. So true. Now researchers in Gainesville are looking for a fix. I-Team investigator Vic Michelucci takes us inside a specialized lab to show us the high-tech tools being tested to catch criminals and stop this kind of theft. From simply swiping something off of a shelf and not paying for it to large groups of people smashing and grabbing as much as they can, shoplifting is not a victimless crime. In 2022, American retail stores reported $112 billion in losses, and that's just what was reported. You better believe that cost gets passed down to all of us, the shoppers. The basic consumer may say, okay, Target, Walmart, they're billion dollar companies. Who cares if they lose a little bit? Why does it affect me? Anytime somebody's stealing in your community, it's obviously a problem. Um, uh, many of those retailers you just mentioned are closing stores and uh, millions of Americans don't have credit cards and rely on their local store. Millions of Americans do not buy online. And that's just the start of it. According to Dr. Reed Hayes, he's a former detective who's now one of the country's leading shoplifting researchers. The high loss items, many stores now are just aren't carrying them anymore. It's the theft level is not sustainable. Even a major corporation you know, is not going to be able to sustain that kind of loss level. So now when you go to your store, you can't get it. One in four companies told the National Retail Federation they were forced to close a specific store because of high theft. Nearly half reduced their hours. And one in three cut back on products they put on the shelves. That'll get your attention. Yeah. This can be everything from jeans and tools to laundry detergent and razors even beef jerky and energy drinks. How do you stop yeah. this? What is, so what is, what you'll see that? different methods, right? So what we're trying to do is make it harder. Dr. Hayes and his team at the Loss Prevention Research Council work to think like a criminal to stop a criminal. Shoplifters like to, you know, just sweep uh, sure. into a bag or a something like that. Um, so if you require them to use two hands uh, to remove items, now they've got to hold this up. In fact, they even use seasoned shoplifters to test out products at this Safer Places lab at the University of Florida. Besides teaming up with UF, they have a grocery list of the biggest brands which they partner with. One, you're having to manipulate things, listen to the noise it's making. And some of these also have electronic counters, so if you take out more than two or three at the same time, it starts alarming. And from ink that destroys the pants, to a lid that won't let someone open a liquor bottle without cracking it, this simulated storefront has hundreds of the newest devices to stop or at least slow down thieves who often steal and then sell the items either online, at corner stores and flea markets, or in other countries. All right, so I'm putting my phone number in. Will requiring someone to put their mm -hmm. phone number in do the trick? Success. Case is now open. Or will it take artificial intelligence to alert managers to would-be thieves? Like using cameras and computers to detect someone making sweeping motions into a purse or trying to cheat the self-checkout. Now it's progressed to the point with ever seen technology, AI, computer vision, where it also can recognize the, the object. If you're, <clears throat> you know, the example is, let's say you've got a high, high priced item and you're scanning a low priced item. Now the camera's saying that what you scan doesn't match up with that. It can, okay. It's object recognition. All of that is being tested right here, right now, on UF's campus. There are countermeasures, but uh, nothing's perfect. Retail theft obviously comes with a huge financial burden. How big? Well, in 2022, Florida stores lost about $5.4 billion. Georgia stores took a $2.4 billion hit. And that means hundreds of millions of dollars in sales tax is also missed. That's money that was going to go into our local communities. And then, of course, you have the safety concerns. Here's a shoplifter fighting with a clerk who confronted her over stolen Cheetos. And this shoe store confrontation shows a suspect throwing punches at staff. Oh, they said the your stole stuff, do not leave. Get it up. goes both ways. Police in Ohio recently shot and killed a pregnant woman accused of stealing as she tried to drive off. Shots fired! Stop the 
car! Research from the Council on Criminal Justice shows a rise in store assaults. 11,000 reported across the U.S. in 2022, which is why many companies have a hands-off approach. Two in five telling employees not to pursue anyone or confront any shoplifters. Some even have a policy to not call police. The second part irks state attorney Melissa Nelson. How how do you feel as a state attorney that there are corporate policies and companies that are saying, even if we know who did it and they stole hundreds of dollars from our store, we're not going to prosecute? As a state attorney, that is very frustrating to me. It's also frustrating to me as a citizen. She believes police and prosecutors should handle this and consequences should be harsh, not letting thieves off the hook so they can offend again. And it sends the wrong message. Mm-hmm. And it certainly sends the wrong message, too, to law-abiding citizens who are working hard um, to pay their bills. Back in Gainesville at the Safer Places Lab, the goal is to deter crime from happening altogether. Better lighting, better cameras, and better store design could be the future to making sure the goods you want stay on shelves and at a reasonable price. I'm Vic Michalucci, Channel 4. The local station.